I'm going to bring a message maybe uh, in a way slightly different to what I've probably ever done. So uh, some of you know me a bit more than uh, others. So I trust this goes okay. <laughs> but I'm going to read uh, first uh, some words from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And it's in verse, starts in verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that through his poverty you might become rich. I think that's just amazing in itself. And it goes on. Here is my advice about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so now. Finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what he does not have. So it's because of what Christ has done, made us rich that we can give. Not according to what we don't have, but according to what he has given us. And just one other verse, Paul put it into practice a couple of chapters earlier. He talks about all the troubles and the hardships and the beatings and um, honor and dishonor and uh, all kinds of things. That quite a list of um, difficulties he went through. But he said this in verse, chapter 6, verse 10. Yet uh, he was sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Poor, yet, many, yet making many rich having nothing yet possessing everything. And probably therein lies the grace of what Jesus did and therein lies our Christian walk in a nutshell. Uh, the richness that God fills us with, even in our poverty, we come to him as poor needy folks and he fills us and then we can give to others out of that uh, grace I'm going to, I have something here in a treasure chest. And so what could it be? Could it be uh, an heirloom from four generations back in Ireland, this lovely pearl of great price? Could it be, what could it be? Any guesses? <laughs> something very, very precious. Thank you, something absolutely wonderful. And I never really, discovered the preciousness of it till very uh, recently, actually. As we know, <laughs> that is a dandelion. And after a bit, they become like that. Just a sort of a bulb, see, a bulb full of seeds. Now, I'm not going to blow on this now. <laughs> Heidi will kill me. And uh, the leaves are a bit like... Uh, this, if you remember, yeah. so if you notice, we don't notice, do we? <laughs> uh, I haven't too recently, serrated edges. And I discovered that's a treasure. You know, the, the, the land is, uh, the grounds are full of these little flowers. Some call them weeds. They're actual uh, flowers. But um, here's, here's a quote from George MacDonald. Has anybody read any of his books? He inspired C.S. Lewis and Tolkien. Um, he wrote sort of children's stories, but, um, but as he calls them, fairy stories for adults, because they have a meaning in them. But he's uh, full of wisdom, but he says this about nature. Every fact in nature is a revelation of God. Every fact in, nat uh, in nature is a revelation of God, is there such as it is, because God is such as he is. And I suspect that all its facts impress us so that we learn God unconsciously. From the moment for when first we came into contact with the world, it is to us a revelation of God, his things seen by which we come to know the things unseen. What, he goes on to say, what idea could we have of God without the sky? The truth of the sky is what it makes us feel of the God that sent it to our eyes. Its so-called laws are the waving of his garments waving so because he's thinking and loving and walking inside them. That's quite amazing. <laughs> uh, quote, 
I won't disturb my precious <laughs> jewel. But uh, I, I just thought of basically the parable of the dandelion, really. That's what I've been thinking about, and it's kind of hit me uh, <clears throat> uh, of late, because this, this is quite it's something that it says about us, something it says about God as, re as well, actually. But um, the season is incredible, isn't it? It's a, it's a season of yellow. It's a splash of yellow. As someone said, nature's first green is actually gold. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's full. We've got a Forsythe in our garden. It's just a huge bush and has uh, yellow uh, flowers, daffodils. Uh, it's a season of egg yolks, cream tops, which is kind of, and you still drink cream top milk, uh, reflecting the, uh, the, the sun. Um, buttercups, celandines, I've uh, got bumblebees with a strip of yellow over them. Um, and in our little um, balcony, we've got primroses and pansies. Uh, and, uh, and the seeds around here are full of rapeseed, just a huge splash of yellow. So it's, it's a symphony of, uh, of yellow all around. And, and yellow, what does that do? It represents so many things, doesn't it? Sort of um, new life, abundance, uh, hope. And we have an artist friend in South Africa, a, a Jewish messianic uh, believer, amazing artist. And for her, yellow is the color of the Holy Spirit because all the, the new life that he brings, and it's so true. And so when she paints, uh, that's what yellow in her paintings uh, represent. But uh, coming specifically to this little uh, jewel here, um, it, uh, do you know what do you know, know what it means? I've discovered so many facts about it. Uh, dandelion. Anybody know from where it comes from the word? Yeah, very good. Don de Leon, which means lion's teeth. Yeah, it's a lion's tooth. There's something majestic about it. Uh, the lion. Um, it's got uh, serrated uh, these serrated leaves, which they think say it's, it's like lion's teeth. You know, it's got yellow. Obviously, the yellow, the shaggy uh, mane. It's courageous. It's courageous, indomitable. You can't, you can't, uh, you can't get rid of it. It's, it pops up everywhere. It's courageous. It's got this incredible uh, spirit, year after year, everywhere. Here they are, popping up. A lion, lion-hearted. That's what they are. So, so associations with lion, really, in, in its name, even um, beautiful as well. Beautiful beyond description, really. Uh, just a splash of yellow, feast for the eyes. And uh, I discovered also it's, um, it's, it was used as, as, he, as healing, medicinal. Uh, the Pilgrim Fathers brought it to the, the New World because it was a medicinal plant. And every single part of it you can eat, apparently. But I'm not going to quite give a demonstration this morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I read. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, apparently it's, it's full of uh, vitamins, um, you can make it, uh, infuse it in a tea, which is good for the liver. Uh, it's nourishing in salads, the leaves, you know, like, like a, um, rucola, a rocket. Uh, it gives joy, you know, when I was growing up, growing up as a kid, the drink in the youth club was dandelion and burdock. And, <laughs> and when I see it in the supermarket shelves, rarely, I um, always try and buy it. <laughs> and, um, and the article I read about dandelion said, well, what you can do with them is you can make mead out of them, you know, just raw honey, uh, the tops of the heads, a bit of water, and, hun and, uh, and mead. So at the end of the service, there'll be another one, be a glass of. <laughs> <coughs> and it, even the roots can, uh, it's, it's use in, in coffee. So, you know, it's, it's, it's nourishment. It's, uh, it has been used as healing in the past. It's got deep roots. That's why you can't get rid of it. You know, the stems grows whatever long. It's many times below that is, is a root. So you're never going to get rid of it very easily. Uh, deep, deep roots. It knows how to uh, nourish itself. We have a, a patch of them out in our garden, a balcony, and, and I thought, they were glorious. And I thought, yeah, I'm gonna pick one for the service. Went out yesterday morning, and there weren't any there. <laughs> and I thought, oh no, our gardener's come, our gardener's come and strimmed. <laughs> uh, but then I realized they actually close at night. I didn't, never knew that, did you? They close at night, and then they open. So. Um, that patch of ground doesn't get the sun, so when I, when I went out early, they hadn't opened yet. Um, they know when to get the nourishment to open themselves towards the sun, and uh, um, they know how to uh, survive, basically. They know what to do uh, following uh, the sun. So they're also, they know how to feed themselves. 
But they're also persecuted, aren't they? You know, these kind of hardy things. And uh, I don't think there's not, there isn't many more um, insecticides used than, you know, apart from to get rid of cockroaches and tarantulas than, than these, you know. Get rid of these on the, the pristine green um, patch of um, grass out the front, you know, instead of this mono, boring mono kind of green, forgive me if you're fighting dandelions in your, in your garden, but, um, uh, but they, they bring so much colour, uh, and, uh, but, but people try and get rid of them um, so much. Yet they're playful, aren't they, as well? They kind of got joy, and that's what kids do with these, and maybe not just kids. They blow on these and, and uh, make a wish. They're magical too. But really, the, the, the last part of their life, the crowning phase, is when it gets to this. It's like they are giving of themselves and dying completely. They gave all these seeds. There's about 200 that spread up to about five kilometers. They just trust the breath of wind to come and take this away. And, and they're giving themselves, self-giving to the end, everything they have until there's nothing just but a stem at the end. And I thought that was just beautiful. Some of those characteristics I've never discovered, uh, never knew before till about seven days ago. Um, it speaks, so what does it speak? Does it speak about God anywhere in the midst of all that? Well, I think, I think it does. You know, just that lion-heartedness, you know, the, the majesty of these, you know, they're majestic, really, when you think about them. You know, the, 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 the color, the, the deep golden color, the courageousness of them. They're not going to give up at all. Courageous, like a lion. Um, yet also, I think there's the passion in them. You know, the, so the bitterness of the leaves, they're quite bitter, uh, spike leaves. Um, yeah, sorry, I meant to put a slide up uh, earlier, uh, Esther. And yeah, this is our um, balcony, and I went up yesterday, and they were all closed in, and I couldn't see them. Yeah, next slide. And that's what they look like, amazing. And uh, so the next slide actually is from um, uh, Raf Raphael Alba Madonna. And um, this is the picture of obviously Mary, and it's supposed to be the baby Jesus, and John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is giving Jesus the cross, you know, a, a sort of twig in the shape of a cross, sort of prophesying what his life, what he's going to be. That's the sort of portrayal of Raphael. And, uh, and Jesus is taking it. But just at the foot of um, John's uh, leg, on the left of this picture, are dandelions, because it represented the passion that, uh, that this artist saw through this, um, through this simple uh, plant. So through, through art, it's represented just the, the passion and, uh, the, and, and what Christ had to go through for us, dying on the cross, he accepted the passion and the bitterness uh, of, uh, of his service. So not just God as lion, hearted, not just as God who is prepared to send Jesus to go through the passion. It's complete self-giving, and that's the verse we read at the beginning. Self-giving. Though he was rich, he became poor. Absolute self-giving to the end. Just trusting himself to God the Father on the cross and letting the Spirit blow where that would take it. And what's it taken? What's, what's, what, what are the seeds that have been planted? It's you and me. You and me, we're here today because of that. The seeds that just kind of blew away in, in the refreshing power of the Spirit. Um, Jesus just trusted his, himself to the Lord. Into your hands I commit my spirit. And he died and he suffered and he brought salvation to the world for those who will believe on him and follow him. Complete self-giving. And through his self-giving he brings healing. You know, it's a simple plant that's brought healing and nourishment throughout the ages. That's what the Lord does. That's the parable of the uh, dandelion. Some, some of the things perhaps we can see God, maybe he was thinking about some of these things when he grew this beautiful uh, plant. And what about us? Uh, the parable of the dandelion for us. Well, I, I think there's a, just two or three things came to mind. I think it's actually precious, you know. I have never looked at them with the eyes that I've, I've looked this, and this year, and now I see them everywhere. Before, I just ignored them. You know, just, just uh, well, you see them every year, you know. 
considered a weed. But so beautiful, you know, all these kind of beautiful characteristics, precious, precious. And you are, in God's sight, precious. You know, even though people try and put you down, the enemy of our souls comes to, see, to steal and kill and destroy. You know, people have been uh, horrible uh, to us through our lives, I'm sure, uh, through our lives. Whatever has, whatever has gone before, whatever has gone before, God calls you and says you are precious. I see, I see you. You shine, you are glorious, you light up all the greenery around you, you, just you, if it's just you and that bit of grass, you would shine and you do shine. You are precious. I think that's, 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 yeah, that's what the Lord's saying through this simple dandelion. Precious, yet uh, called, <laughs> called uh, to bloom wherever you're planted, you know, in these kind of arid places to bloom. And they grow everywhere, don't they? Cracks and out of concrete and piles. <clears throat> Even in arid, difficult places, you're called to bloom, to bring your light, your joy, your fullness, the fullness that God gives you, uh, his healing. You're called. And <clears throat> he calls us to put down roots, you know, just to, to always put down roots, not to let ourselves go dry, receive from him, receive from his word receive from his spirit, to put down uh, deep uh, roots and always follow the sun, always follow the sun. And so, um, so uh, precious, called to bloom, even in arid places. And finally, to give of ourselves. That's what we're called to give, to give of ourselves uh, to the end. But it's not out of you know, just emptying because we've got nothing left. It's out of richness. He wants to pour richness and newness into our lives. And that's what he does by his Holy Spirit. So receive of his richness. Receive of his grace today. Maybe you just need a touch from him today. Just receive his fullness. Receive his richness. Receive the sun, his nourishment, so that you can be filled and give the beautiful, unique things that he has put in you. So I'm just going to read and conclude this part by reading those few verses we read at the beginning again today uh, that we read earlier. Uh, and uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 4 you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. So here's my advice about what is best for you. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now finish the work, so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it, according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one doesn't have. And Paul himself, sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, poor, yet many, making many rich, having nothing, yet possessing everything. Just a little flower. And just one last uh, Example I was reading. It was the anniversary of, uh, anniversary, um, of a gentleman called Enoch Sontonga. Anybody heard of him? Who uh, died in 1905. He was a, 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 a teacher in South Africa uh, from the Kosa uh, tribe. He wrote a song for his school. He thought it would just be, it'll be a nice song for his school. He clearly had a hard life if he died at 32. But the song he wrote was In Kosa Sigalele, Africa, which this is, is now still, 120 years later, whatever, part of the national anthem of South Africa. Just a simple teacher. Wrote other songs and tunes he thought be lost in anonymity. But God kind of just blew on those petals. And what he did still echoes, and you get kind of fully grown rugby players <laughs> belting out with tears in their eyes 
on a rugby field, the Springboks, and cause the Sikalele Africa, which means God bless Africa. May her strength rise up high. Hear our prayers and bless us. Descend, O Spirit. Descend, O Holy Spirit. What beautiful lyrics. He was certainly a dandelion with lion's teeth that God blew on. So may the Lord bless you this morning. What do you need to take from that today?